Come and listen to a story about a man named Jed. The poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolks said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is a place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Jethro's out front hanging up the welcome sign. Dad! Did he come? Is the mayor here yet? No, but it's pretty near time. Ooh. Let's go out front and be ready. Well, I got a special surprise I'm working on. You call me when the mayor drives up. Oh, Jed, I just can't believe that the great man will be right here under our own roof. I'm as nervous as a grasshopper in a hen house. I'm a mite shaky myself. <laughs> it ain't everybody can say, uh, the mayor of Bug Tussle slept here. <laughs> Come on out where you can see the banner on me. It's a dandy. Put this here. I did. You said we ought to roll out the red carpet for the mayor. Where'd you get it? I ripped it out of the upstairs hallway. Why did it? Boy, meant well. Look it. Yonder's my banner. <laughs> Welcome, Hog. Yeah, that's his name, Mayor Hogg. We spelled with two G's. The most honored name in the hills. Okay, I'll change it. Well, maybe it'd read better if you put Mayor in front of Hogg. <laughs> All right, I'll get right at it. Oh, there ain't time. He's turning in the gate. I sure would hate for him to see that sign. I got another one that's a special welcome from me. If I wave it, maybe he won't notice the big one. <laughs> it needs fixing, too. It reads like you're welcoming yourself. <laughs> It's Mr. Drysdale. We didn't recognize you in your new car. Pretty snazzy, eh? Yeah. Now, get it out of the way so the mayor can drive up. Miss <laughs> Holloway, <laughs> move the car. Right, Chief. I'm here to welcome your distinguished guest, the mayor of Bugquist. Uh, Bug Tussle. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. And I'm greatly honored. You bet you are. You're going to be shaking hands with the greatest hog in the hills. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clampett, tell me more about this mayor. Hug? <laughs> Amos Wentworth Hall, a born leader of men. Greatest speech maker you ever did hear. Oh, he's a spellbinder. When he gets through talking, you just beg to have your taxes raised. <laughs> <laughs> Never lost an election. Won them all by a landslide. And he's a personal friend of yours, eh? Well, no, uh, we couldn't claim that. I met him at a Women for Hog rally. <laughs> I shook hands with him a couple of times after speeches, but uh, he'd be bragging to say we was personal friends. Hey, everybody, it's the mayor. I see him a-coming. Ellie Mae! Come on down, boy. D -d Does he have a motorcycle escort? Wouldn't be surprised. He's an important man. He's coming in the gate. That's the Bug Tussle official car. <laughs> Greetings from the good people of Bug Tussle, from which I came. Now, they was worried about me making this trip, but I said to them, there's nothing to be afraid of but being afraid itself. I shall return. And government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from Bug Tussle. <laughs> That man sure does things with words, don't he? Yes, he steals them. <laughs> Mayor, Your Honor, sir, I hope you remember Jed Clampett. Of course I do. 
Good to see you again, Mr. Clampett. Now, I'm, I'm Milburn Drysdale. This is Mr. Clampett. Oh, uh, you see, the mayor never seen much of me. I reckon it's Granny he remembers. That's right. Good to see you, Granny. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm Jane Hathaway. That's Granny. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> nice to see you. When a great man like him meets so many important people, you can't expect him to remember a bunch of sorghum lappers like us. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Your Honor, sir, uh, can I have the privilege of toting your bag upstairs? Why, of course you can. By the way, you old enough to vote. For the air. Fine lad, and a credit to your upbringing. I once said in a speech, as the twig is bent, so is the tree in class. Oh, Honor, you do have a silver tongue. Now, if you lead the way, we'll all sit down to vittles at the fancy eating table. Oh, well, well let me go in first so I can get my special surprise ready. <laughs> You'll stay to vittles. Oh, of course. It's not every day you can sit at the table with a hog. <laughs> get it? Amos Hog. A hog. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, uh, I think I'd best warn you. The mayor is a mite sensitive about his name. After 12 campaigns full of name calling, he can hardly stand a side of bacon. The <laughs> <laughs> said we was to roll out the red carpet for you. Sweet child. I is she old enough to vote? Not yet. <laughs> Come on, Luther. <laughs> But you know I can't abide no hog in my house. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Why, that was one of the finest chicken dinners I ever set tooth to. Thank you. It was what I had in mind when I first coined my famous campaign slogan, a chicken in every pot and a mule in every barn. That has a familiar ring. Oh, yeah. Lots of things he said has become famous. Well, Your Honor, I'm afraid Miss Hathaway and I will have to be going. Mr. Drysdale, as I shake your hand, I can truthfully repeat what I have often said. I never met a man I didn't like. <laughs> Meeting you has certainly been one of the high points of my life. And Mr. Drysdale has met some mighty important folks. True. Governors, senators. I even shook the hands of a president once. But meeting your distinguished guest tops them all. Well, no, you hear that, man? I only wish you were staying longer so that some of my famous friends could share this thrill of meeting you. I regret that I have but one day to give California. <laughs> but a man cannot be all things to all people. A tussle without a mayor is like a ship without a rudder. <laughs> Eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. And as for me, give me liberty or give me death. <laughs> like that ought to be wrote down and saved. Don't worry. <laughs> well, Your Honor, this, this has been a unique experience, but I must get back to my work. Ah, yes, as I once said, a man can toil from sun to sun, but a woman's work is never done. Listen to that. No wonder they call him the poet of the hill. Yeah. That reminds me of the slogan you made up for your last campaign, Mayor. I talk low, but carry a big stick, so don't change horses in the middle of the creek. Here, here, here. What are you young'uns doing with the mayor's official car? Well, he told us we could drive it, Granny. Yeah, said we could take it down to the gas station and fill her up. Sure was fun. Oh, that mayor hog, always thinking of others. With that one little act of kindness, he filled their hearts with joy. And his tank with gas. <laughs> great man, Granny, great man. I sure hope I can be a mayor like him someday. A worthy ambition, my boy. Mayor Hogg is a born leader. Come on, Granny, hop aboard. Do you think a mayor would mind? A man who cares about nothing but others? Why, he'd be delighted. <laughs> oh, my. I feel just like the first lady of Bug Tussle. Hey, you can crank the siren, Granny. Ring the bell, Jethro. <laughs> really, Chief? 
it is bad enough to let the Clampets be deluded by the, that phrase-stealing phony, but to encourage Jethro to emulate him, to make him a hero. Now, listen, I believe in telling people what they want to hear. And Jed Clampett wants to hear that Hogg is a hero. But you must follow your own principles. I do. My guiding light has always been that ancient Spanish proverb, Vaya con dinero. Go with the money. <laughs> and here's another one. No other olas. Don't make waves. <laughs> Wait here. We'll be back quick as we give Mr. Drysdale the good news. Everything's all right, Chief. It isn't the police. The bank isn't being robbed. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> what was that siren? Just Mayor Hogg and the Clampets in the Bud Tussle official car. Well, the old duffer's back for another helping of Drysdale charm before he leaves. If I may suggest... You I... may listen and learn. That's what you may do. Success is knowing how to handle people. And you are studying under the old professor. <laughs> Yes, tell the senator, we'll all get together on the mayor's next trip out. Yes, I'm sorry, too. Goodbye, Governor. <laughs> oh, Mayor Hogg, I was just giving the governor the bad news, that you have to return to Bug Tussle without seeing him. Well, call him right back and give him some good news. We just talked to the mayor to stay in home. <laughs> yeah. Now you can do all them things you talked about at the dinner table. Having a party with the movie stars and them political bigwigs. Giving them the key to the city? A parade down Wilshire Boulevard. Putting them on the TV? Now, 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 I'm just a simple man, man of the people. Just a little get-together with the governor, a few mayors and senators, and some movie stars, plenty for me. Ain't that just like a great man? Yes. I wonder if I might speak to the great man alone. Sure thing. Excuse us, Miss Hathaway. Of course, old professor. <laughs> Mayor Hogg, I'm afraid I have something to confess. I always said an honest confession is good for the soul. Oh, Bridget, I, I must write that down. Uh, never mind. Um, let me hear it. Well, what I said about being close to the governor and the senator, well, I'm afraid I was bragging a little just to impress Mr. Clampett. I always said pride goeth before a fall. Oh, such <laughs> wisdom. If you don't mind, I am going to make a few notes. Now, Mr. Price, <laughs> what it all boils down to is that you've made some promises you can't keep. Exactly. And I can't afford to have Jed Clampett find out. I understand now. I have a little saying. You scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. It's a deal. Where's your itch? In the pocketbook. It seems that Bug Tussle's in a little financial difficulty. Oh? Just this past Monday, it come to light that five high-placed officials was guilty of mismanaging funds. Shocking. And who were they? Tax assessor, the treasurer, Fire chief, police chief, justice of the peace. The purpose of my coming out here was to raise money to cover those mistakes and uh, avoid a, a public scandal. Oh, that's highly commendable. But why don't you expose them? I happen to hold all five offices. <laughs> and then there was the year that Fred Tyler run again him. And old Mayor Hogg came up with a dandy. Tip the canoe and Tyler, too. <laughs> Say, Jeff, did anyone ever figure out what that meant? Oh, but it sure caught on. Had a dandy ring to it. And then there was the year... Granny, we could go on forever about the mayor, but we've bent Miss Jane's ear long enough. Well, the things that man said would fill a book. True, <laughs> and I think he's got it. That's what everybody says. Amos Hogg has got it. I've tried to ask Mr. Clampett for the money, but I just can't bring myself to do it. How much money are we talking about? You see, to them, I've always been a hero. How much? A knight in shining armor. How much? About 100000 <laughs> You'll be a knight in rusty armor before you get 100000 out of me. You could call it a campaign contribution. Forget it. I'm a shoe-in winner with my new idea. I'm declaring war on poverty. <laughs> Goodbye, Your Honor. 
Suppose I give you a note, signed by the mayor and five, top of the... Ow! <laughs> I just can't ask Mr. Clampett for the money, now what am I going to do? You made your bed, lie in it. Say, that's a good one. Will you write that down for me? <laughs> well, you two get your talking done? You bet. Well, not quite. We'll talk some more at that big party Mr. Drysdale's going to give with the governor and senators and all. <laughs> well, that ain't going to be too much trouble, Mr. Drysdale? Well, I... Oh, of course not. I say he made the bed. He ought to want to lie in it. <laughs> you hear that? The mayor just come up with another dandy. <laughs> I just can't tell you what a thrill it was just sitting up there beside you on your official car. Ray says it makes her feel like the first lady of Bug Tussle. Look at me. You'll embarrass your granny and a mayor, too. You dumb old girl. Uh, Mr. Mayor, how about you and me going inside and having some cold hog jowls? <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Honor. To err is human. To forgive. Divide. Didn't you hear that, Jed? Beautiful. Just beautiful. You're a great man, Your Honor. Please, call me Amos. Oh, Your Honor. I mean Amos. Uh, come on inside and I'll light the fire in the parlor. I'll come in just as soon as I have a talk with Mr. Clampett. You want to talk with me, uh, Mr. Mayor, Your Honor, sir? No, please. Let's just make it. Amos! And Judd. Jed. <laughs> yes. I said I. I reckon you're wondering why I came out here. Why? I said to myself, go west, Amos Hogg, go west. <laughs> Granny and me kind of figured that uh, you had your eyes on the big job back in Washington. Me? No, no, no. I do not choose to run for president. If nominated, I will not accept. If elected, I will not serve. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I'm glad to hear that you're going to stick with Bug Tussle, but uh, why'd you come out to California? Jed, I'm going to have to ask you for something, and it comes hard. Shucks, I'm honored to think that you'd come to me. What is it? Well, as you know, I've devoted my whole life to serving the people of my community, not just as mayor, but as tax assessor treasurer, police chief, fire chief, and justice of the peace. Bug Tussle owes you a lot. Yes. And I owe a lot to Bug Tussle. <laughs> it seems to me that the scales is tipped in your favor. Why, you never even took time out to have yourself a wife and family? I'm a lonely old man coming into the twilight years of a life lived with malice toward none, and charity for all. <laughs> well, uh, just tell me what I can do. Jed, I've carried the burden alone as long as I can. Now, I need a helping hand. I need... I need... Hey! Y'all, come on in. Granny says she ain't gonna serve vittles till the mayor sits in front of the fireplace and has a glass of her elderberry wine. Well, you tell Granny we'll be in directly. The mayor's just on the edge of asking me something. Oh, all right, go ahead. <laughs> Perhaps a drop of Granny's elderberry wine will give me the courage I need. These are times to try men's souls. Hot <laughs> dog! Let's see. <laughs> on your full sack measure. I have City Hall on a... Hello, Mayor. This is Milburn Drysdale, president of the Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills. Yes, look, we have a visiting dignitary in town, and he's mayor of one of our Midwestern cities. Now, I was wondering if you could present him with the keys to the... No, 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 no not Chicago. Look, if you could present him with the keys to the city... No, no, not Kansas City. No, no not St. Louis. But it's called Bug Tussle. Yes, and it's a nice... Hello, 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 hello. 
Where does he get off? Chief, the mayor of Los Angeles is a busy man. That was a mayor of Poison Well, Nevada. <laughs> I've run out of California cities. You're not having much luck with the governor, either. Have you reminded his office of my campaign contribution? Yes, they thought the 25 cents was for a bumper sticker. <laughs> See, maybe they haven't heard the election results back in Bug Tussle. See if you can get me the loser. <laughs> Send him a quarter, too. Can Ellie and me go for a ride on the fire engine now? Yeah. I want Ellie to finish clearing the table. Get through? He keeps the mayor company. And listen to him while he's talking. You might learn something. The greatest. Them things that he said about his war on poverty. He was going to make sure that every man got more than $50 a year. And he just made up a brand new slogan. 54-40 of fire. I wish this would have happened when I was a young widow. I might have had a chance of being the first lady of Bug Tussle. Maybe. This may be telling tales out of school, but it uh, wasn't politics that brought the mayor out here. What you mean? He just tried to ask me something, and he couldn't find the words. Amos Hogg? Tongue-tied as a lovesick schoolboy. Lovesick? Jed... You don't mean. I sure do. You're greening me. He done everything but come right out and ask for your hand. Oh! <laughs> oh! Are you all right? It's the dream of every woman in the hills to be the first lady of Bug Tussle, living in the big white cabin at the end of Main Street, having my own official mule. Getting free passes to the Bijou Theater. Being the official hostess for the Possum Day celebration. Getting the first pick of anything at the general store. There's a lot of honors going with being Mrs. Hogg. Mrs. Hogg. <laughs> Mrs. A. Hogg. <laughs> Daisy Hogg. <laughs> Granny Hogg. <laughs> Mayor and Lady Hall. <laughs> How many free passes would I get at the Bijou? We could buy two or three fire trucks if Granny was first lady. Hook and ladder, pumper, big red convertible for the fire chief. That'd be me. <laughs> Mayor Hogg? Hey, Mayor Hogg. Mm -hmm. I say we could have a real fire department with Granny's money. Money. <laughs> Granny has money? Well, yeah, yeah. And not as much as Uncle Jed, but it comes to better than 15 million dollars. Well, heck yeah. And it'd all be yours if you marry her. Marry her? <laughs> well, how, how much you uh, say? 15 million. 15 million? <laughs> Why, with that kind of money, I could build a whole new town. Hog City. <laughs> Can I be fire chief? <laughs> oh, mayor, about that talk we was having, maybe if you spoke to Granny, you... I was on my way to the kitchen for that very purpose. <laughs> oh, Amos. <laughs> Let's go, Jethro. But Uncle Jed, I want to listen and see if I'm going to be fire chief. Ooh. But Uncle Jed. Sit down, Granny. <laughs> it's a long, long time from May to December. And the days grow short when you reach September. <laughs> the autumn weather turns the leaves to flame. And I haven't got time for the waiting game. You ain't got time. <laughs> Oh, howdy, Mr. Drysdale. Yes, sir. How's the mayor's big party coming? Instead of a party, I'm giving him this. That looks like a check. Yes. Where is it? Oh, he's in the parlor proposing to Granny. What? Well, yeah, then we's all going to Bug Tussle, and I'm going to be fire chief. <laughs> <laughs> Who was out at the door, Jethro? Oh, that was Mr. Drysdale. He went in the parlor to talk to the mayor. Jethro, you shouldn't have let... <laughs> hey, mayor! Goodbye, goodbye, pardon is such sweet sorrow that I would say goodbye till it be Mara. <laughs> Granny, he's getting away. Bug Tussle needs it more than I do, Jed. Besides, did you hear what he said as he was going out the door? A uh, pardon being such sweet sorrow? Yeah, poor fella. The silver-tongued orator finally run dry. <laughs> Well, now 
now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.